Hello, hello, hello! Good morning! Good morning, everybody! Another week, another week. Hi, Barb! I had I can't wait. I'm so excited to see you today. I'm so glad you decided to join. Okay, let me share this really quick. There we go. Hi, Mor Mrs. Morris. Thanks for coming. Hi, Karen. Okay. So, most of you know me by now, but if you don't, I'm Kathy <laughs> Grillo, and <laughs> this is where you can find me and follow me, and today I am scoping for our Inspired Mind Scope Train. Here's our schedule today. Check it out. Check it out. We're going to have a great day today, as always, but, you know, today is awesome. Everybody follow Art by Zalazar. She's up next. Today's her first day on the scope train, so let's follow her and give her some support. Yay! <laughs> yes, it's must-see TV. That's right. Even if I have my husband saying, why do you wake me up so early on a Saturday? Because I wake him up and kick him out of my uh, bedroom slash studio. <laughs> All right, so I've been working on this today, and this is an Alaska, a sketch of an Alaska Malmute, and as always, I start with just the sketch. Yes, it's a new one. I try to start a new one. I haven't. I have some that aren't finished yet, but you know, I try to do something different every Saturday. So this is just to be another one that started. You know, thanks for the hearts, everybody, and if you can like. Um, Share it out and all that so we could get some followers for our train. That would be awesome. <clears throat> so the only challenge with, this is an Alaskan Malmute. And a challenge with an Alaskan Malmute is they have a lot of white. So white is a very hard color to paint because white is not white. And you have to have the underneath painting, the under colors to show any detail in a white. So... I worked on this this morning. I had the sketch from last night, but I worked on these eyes this morning. Because another characteristic of an Alaska Malmute is they have these brilliant blue eyes. And the eyes didn't take as long, so I should have done them for you guys. But because they're very small. So Alaska Malmutes have very small eyes. And they're very um, light colored because that helps them with the snow blindness. In um, up in Alaska where it's snow. Yes, and then like just like football players put the bar dark um, marks under their eyes to keep the reflections um, from bouncing into their eyeballs. They also have a nice dark circle around their eyes. Thank you. So, but you can see, if, I don't know if you can see, I have like blues, I have grays, and I'm building up some of this white color. And I'm going to start laying in, the white doesn't really pop until you put up the colors around it to support it. So I'm going to lay in some of the um, color around this white just to help show it off. Thanks. Actually, um, I'm just slowly, when I'm not doing um, custom portraits for somebody else, I've been um, working my way through the AKC um, breed list. So, as you can tell, I'm not very far because I'm just on Alaskan Malmutes, but <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I've been doing. All right, so this little circle. And if anybody has any questions, um, please ask. Well, yeah, it's just kind of practice, and then I have a base form, you know. Um, please ask if you have any questions because sometimes I say the same thing over and over so much that I forget to say stuff that people don't, you know, newer people don't know. This is Corel Painter, which I absolutely love because it is not like Illustrator or some of the other computer software that is more for totally like digital art. Corel Painter is more directed towards painting. Hence the name Painter in the title. So, oh, see, I didn't want to do that. All right. This, 
this little circle here, if you see it, is my brush size. And in this program, I can do any brush size I want. So I'm going to get a bigger brush here to blend my base color a little faster and lighter. Not as intense, because it's a bigger brush um, spreading the color. And I just lay down a little bit of color here. Hi, how are you? Thanks for showing up. I know it's like later in the day for you over there. So these base colors is what's going to help um, support the detail lines that I put on top of it. And um, the other characteristic about Alaskan Malmutes is they have a ton of really soft, big, fluffy hair. So in order to get like the, it's not wiry or very, you know, individual, but to get the big fluffiness, I do this undercoating because then I just paint the details on top and it'll, so I'm brushing it into my white area just slightly. And then I'll come back with this white and I'm using um, a digital digital um, oil painting setting and the brush I'm using is called a wet blender so it'll blend with the other colors as I paint so you can see as I start throwing in some of this detail on top and blending it from the white into the gray area this is how we're gonna get our hair details So I'm just bringing it, because I want this white area around the eyes to start blending in. Yeah, it's it, it works pretty good. <laughs> and it's just like painting, so, but, I have, but I have a really teeny brush right now. And so white is not white. You have to put in the grays. And like I have, um, I've been using a lot of ice blue because of the eyes, and I kind of want to give it this slightly... Um, slightly cold effect. So an ice blue is a really nice um, color. Being that they're generally, they were, you know, they're, they're for Alaska. They have these this big, thick, furry, warm hair. And so um, my sketch, which is under here, will not be part of the drawing when I'm done. Um, it'll, it'll be gone. So it'll just be left with this. The sketch is just my flow map. It's like a direction, a guide map of what direction is the hair going and what part of the face. Or um, you might want to look to see if there's a color change right now. Because I don't look at my reference like constantly. Especially when I'm just doing a... Um, a breed and it's not a custom portrait. I do look at the references a little more when I'm doing a specific dog. Like if you gave me, if you asked me to paint your dog, I would really follow it a lot closer to do all the markings and everything. But I'm just doing a, it just has to look like a Alaska Malmute right now. It doesn't have to look like, speaking of dogs, my dogs need to go chase a squirrel. Let me open the door for them. <laughs> Go get it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> I have two little Shih Tzus. And gotta protect their yard from those squirrels. Oh, now the little one has to go out. Oh, yeah. like I can't be left out all right so <laughs> yeah squirrel that's it you that's it's hilarious I'm putting in a little bit of like a blue gray too for this black this black is gonna it's kind of gray but it's a black it's not as black as around the eyes in most parts though <clears throat> Thanks. Um, 
hang on, I can show you really quick. I'm almost done. I've been on vacation this week, otherwise they would have been done. But, oh, no, that's the back up. Right there. I just have a paw and a butt to do. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I just have a paw and a butt to do. <laughs> but I, I, um, my birthday was last week, so I've been on vacation. So I haven't, I haven't scoped or drawn all week. Oh, I didn't know what to do with myself. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, if you'd like to see my art, I appreciate a follow on any of my pages or social media. And my payoff is when somebody says, hey, I like that, or good job. <laughs> Thank you. That's I try. That's why I start with the eyes when doing a portrait. I really start with the eyes, because if I could get the personality and the look I'm going for in the eyes, the rest of the body is pretty easy. Which is why you don't see me do the eyes as much as I probably should show you how I do the eyes. Because I can really spend a lot of time on them. But these eyes actually do not take as long as I usually take. And then the rest is just like a... Taking the time to blend it in. So I'm going to go back and forth from this white... To the gray. And I'm just like flicking in the direction that... I want my hair to flow. I'm going to build up highlights and the um, oil painting setting in this program is a really good job, especially with this um, blender brush, of sort of um, shading and blending it for me as I go. I just have to build up the layers for it. So I don't do a whole lot of shading other than the undercoating. The rest is just individual brush strokes for dog hair. And I'll just put highlights and shadows to create the form that I'm looking to create. Thanks. I always worry about doing this, especially like I was trying to get the eyes and some of this white. I wanted to get past the white because white is so boring. But it, if you're going to paint, you do have to learn how to, um, how to handle white. All it is is practice, Barb. I'm telling you, I got this. I got this program last Christmas for a Christmas gift. So I've only been doing it since January. So if you treated yourself to some digital art on a decent computer, I'd love to help teach you. You can contact me privately anytime you want. If you decided to try it, I'd be more than happy to answer questions or try to help guide. I have video, I have video chatted, video messaged people before helping talking them through stuff. Anytime. I love it. I get excited when people are excited about art. <laughs> I'm such a nerd. I'm a geek. Thanks. I'm such a geek. I'm like, oh. but see, uh, I need a you amaze me because what you do at the henna is fascinating to me. See, we all have are different things. This is um, Corel Painter. I'm um, 2016, and I'm having a fit because 2017 is um, available now. <laughs> so there's always something new. Uh, but I think um, I think 2017 is generally the, the same program. They have just added um, some more brushes. Because I can get the upgrade for like a hundred bucks. I'm still really thinking about it. But I think it's really, I have to look into it. I think it's just brushes. Um, but you can see how I treat the white. I'll put little flecks of black. I have some gray. I even have some blue. And you have to have something in white to give it shape and um, lift it up. Otherwise, you're not going to see it. And it looks like any, nothing. So... Whenever you have a white dog, or a dog that has white, you can't just sit there and take, oh, oh, I have white, I'm going to paint white. It just does not work that way. You have to um, have a few colors. There's actually even a little bit of a beige in there. It has to have supporting colors to come off as white. Hmm. 
Otherwise, it's just a, it has it's flat and it won't have anything anything to support it. Yes, white is super hard, especially especially on a white sheet of paper. All right, so now I'm adding in some of this darker color, and even black is not black. So if white is not white. Black is not black. What? What are you talking about? You thought you knew your colors, right? No. <laughs> black usually has blues. And, and black is colors just with darker hues. So black needs supporting colors too to give it shape and form. Otherwise, it's just black. Yes, it's true. And you kind of have to... Um, you have to understand that a bit to get some more realistic dimensions and forms into your drawings or paintings. Because even if you're doing black and white, like even if you're doing a graphite pencil drawing, you still have to understand the concept, you know, your contrast. A contrast scale of how to get um, the shadings to work the way you want them to go. And that's just practice and time. Like, Barb, you have the skill. If you really wanted to do, wanted to do um, a digital art, I'm sure you could play around with it and you'd figure it out pretty fast. It's not that, it's not difficult. What, it's just draw, it's just painting. I'm painting just like you did. I just happen to be painting on my computer. My computer screen's my canvas. That's what I like about um, the Corel Painter program. It's really not super techy digital. I'm painting once I have my brushes and things set up. No, this this is um what do you mean pro painter? This is Corel painter. Alright, so I wanna make I'm being careful because the the front face is all white. Corel see I'll I'll show you, hang on. Um, how's the easiest way to show you? That's just going to bring up what I have. Hang on. <laughs> I'm going to type it for you guys. All right. So... It is Corel Painter. This is the 2000, and, um, yes, that's right. Corel Painter. This is the new 2017. And see, I think really all the two, so the differences is all these, um, different brushes that they're giving me. Yes. Ooh, I want it so bad. I already have 2016, but I think I'm only going to get these new stuff if I get 2017. But it's Corel Painter. But it has a nice little price. Do you see it? Ooh! <laughs> yeah! That's the drawback right there. <laughs> but, but, Think of it this way. You have to also look at the big picture. Okay? Look at the big picture. You put that money out. But um, I don't buy paint. I don't buy pencils. I don't buy paper. Yeah, I don't buy paper. If I screw up, I'm not wasting paper. I have every single medium to play around with. So you kind of have to sit there and think that how much do you spend on paper and pencils and paint and, you know, so it adds up. And if you went a whole year, I mean, without, like, spending a ton of money on all that stuff, yeah, it ends up evening out, you know. Oh, are you mailing? Yeah, you, you could. Oh, you mean, like, me? Like, if somebody did a commission, I can digitally send it to them? Yeah. 
if that's what you're talking about, I could. Um, usually when I do a commissioned work, um, I send, I do print it out for them, generally, and send them a, a printed copy, and then I also send them the digital copy. So then they can take that copy and um, you can print it on any size you want. If it's a commissioned piece and it's your dog, you own it. So you can print it on a t-shirt, you can print it on a coffee mug, you can take it and you know, I, once I'm done painting, doing the, I just charge you for painting your dog, you know. Once I'm done with that, it's, it's yours. You can do what you want with it. Now, if I was selling prints of, uh, like, this dog, who's not really anybody's specific dogs, but say you just liked Alaskan Malmutes, I'd probably just send you the printed print. I mean, that's the difference. I wouldn't want people going out and, like, making Malmute t-shirts out of my picture. Right. Or, you know, if somebody sends me the picture and I'm painting your dog from your picture, you know, that's a different story. And then, like, this dog is just a composite of many pictures of an Alaska Malmute in my head just for body style, and I'm just painting it from my own brain. So, I mean, I have a reference color, but that's about it. But not too many people, you know, more people really want a picture of their own dog. They don't really want some, you know, strange dog. <laughs> yeah, it would be like having a picture of some weird kid in your... Um, advice on drawing pets. Well, one, you just have to practice. Um, you need to study a little bit of anatomy, and, and not specifically a dog anatomy or a cat anatomy, but just kind of how animals differ from humans, maybe, if you're used to doing more, um, figure drawing. Um... And the, the biggest advice is the eyes. You need to work on doing eyes. They differ slightly from people, but I mean the same, if you can look at it as an artist, the same um, principles of an eye drawing, you know, the basics apply. And, uh, but once you get the eyes and, and some sort of um, personality or character into it, I think that's the most important part. And the rest is just practice and getting to know how, you know, different dog structures and different hair types need to be painted. But I look at pets a lot. Like, even when I'm out, I'll see somebody else's dog, and I talk to the dog. I'll be like, hi. You know, before I say hi to the people, I talk to the dogs. I just see them. I see, I, you know, they're, 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 um, they have a great personality, so you kind of have to get the personality. I believe, yeah, I believe dogs, you know, they're characters. They have feelings. They have emotions. They, you know, they're not just dumb dogs. Or cats. I have some cats that I'm going to be doing. Actually, I'm going to sketch out a cat next. I have an Intuos Pro tablet and a, and a, and a pen, this little stylus pen. So it's um, pressure-sensitive. Which means if I press lightly, it draws really thin. Let me see if I can show you that. Yeah, if I press lightly, it goes really thin and lighter. And then if I press fat and hard, it'll go darker and fatter, depending on my brush size. So that's all with the same. I haven't changed a setting. I just changed how light I'm touching. Yeah. And then this is what else I like about digital is I protect my layer and it's gone without messing up my drawing. So see, I have a mouse is very hard. A pen is easy. 
you just have to practice transferring it. Like, I just look and I just draw, and eventually your brain, um, I don't even think of a difference anymore. It's like drawing on paper for me. But um, what I love are the layers, so I can protect sections of my painting that I like. Like, the eyes are on a separate layer, so if I screwed up any of the hair around them, I could erase it or um, fix it without worrying about messing up my eye. So that's a little trick. I use a little bit of digital trickery, but it's only because it's, I don't really consider it a trick. It's a, it's a tool I have available. It, it is. I think the hardest thing, Barb, for me to learn, the hardest thing for me to learn was where all the buttons were. And let me ask. <laughs> and then it was just get on there and start painting, you know, play around with it. I spent, um, yeah, I've only, I'm only on page 380 of a 700 page manual. I haven't even read it for this whole summer. So I, when I get more time, um, I need to discover what else this program does because I'm sure it can be even more amazing and do, do things I haven't even discovered yet. So, and this whole style here, I started out doing the acrylic settings and one day I said, oh, I'm going to try the oils. This is, um, one day I said, I'm going to try the oils and I did it and I really liked it. So, this is a real wet oil, but I can show you really quick. In this program, see, I have acrylics, I have airbrushes, I have oils, I have a whole set of blenders, um, chalk, pastels, crayon, I have watercolors. These are like um, computer, these are more computery. I have different erasers, these are special effects, that's a computer stuff. An image hose, that's computer. Um, impastos give me um, depth. Depth, grain, texture, I can develop with these. I have inks, I have markers. Uh, I have oils, palette knives, pens, watercolors. <laughs> I have all these things. And then in each one of... Oh no, this is um, Corel Painter. See it up here, Corel Painter. 2016. So then in each one of these categories you have all these different brushes and you can see yeah you can see the different textures it kind of shows you what they they're going to look like and then on top of that yeah then on top of that you can um, personally adjust every single um, brush control. So these are all the brush controls I have if I really wanted to get into it. I can customize my brush to do whatever. I just don't have time to do all that stuff. So <laughs> I can like just really get in there and customize all that if I wanted to. I tend to use just the settings they give me and figure it out how to paint with them. Personally. <laughs> That's a lot of that's a lot of uh, settings. I don't even know how to use them all yet. So that's, that's, yeah. I'm by no means a pro, and I have not taken any classes. I'm self-teaching myself how to do this. So, yeah. All right, I'm just kind of loosely trying to... Um, Get some color down here in the face. So I'm just kind of blending it out to fill in the space here and start trying to get some shadowing to develop. Where it's going to be darker, where it's going to be lighter. And this underpainting shadow will help, um, so I want some of this over there. This underpainting shadowing will help my blending layers. So I'm making it a little grayer. It's just kind of like a... 
I don't even know what to call it. See, I'm, I'm not, I'm not like all schooled, so I just have my own words for everything. <laughs> I, don't know, I, I hang out with like all these like artists who've gone to school, and I'm like, uh. Well, I'm halfway through already, guys. I can't believe it. The time goes so fast. So I just want to put this up really quick. Everybody, take a screenshot. This is our lineup for today. Hey, Barb, I know you're still here. Put up some emojis. So whoever's here can follow you easy. But you want to follow Art by Zalasar. She's up next. And we need to give her lots of love and support because today's her first time on the train. Whoop, whoop. There she is. She's riding the train with us today. So <laughs> we're glad to have her on board. baby puppies and I'm their mommy so oh this list today is Saturday and we're in a group called inspired mind and every Saturday we do a scope train and what that means is every hour oh thank you every hour we have a new artist that will be scoping doing different types of art all day long and today we've gone from seven to midnight so yeah feel free to join us um we, we're always looking for new talent hope our dream is to one day go from midnight what 12 a.m to 12 to midnight yeah follow where are you where are you there she is at four o'clock right there there she is at four o'clock i will after this yeah, Teddy, if you follow me, I'll follow you for sure. Let, let me know where you're at. But this is our great list. Take a screenshot. You can follow them today. Or all you have to do is look up hashtag inspired mind. I think it's supposed to be inspired minds. But anything like that. And you will find everybody who's scoping. So this is our lineup today. We do that every Saturday. It's a whole great day of this super amazing art. I'm going to um, step back here for a second and see how this is looking. Minimize it. That's what I call my stepping back. So here's the whole drawing. Oh, I don't know if you're talking about me or somebody else, Barb, but I'm going to say you're talking about me too. Ooh, no, I'm just teasing. <laughs> So here's, here's the whole drawing that is eventually I'm going to end up doing. So you can see the face. <laughs> you see the face is actually a pretty small part of the face. Um, but this is, the, this is what it'll look like when it's done. A big furry puppy. We just start out with the face because I start out with those eyes. The eyes tell the story. Have I tried a Cintiq? I know because they're very expensive and I would love a Cintiq. The only thing is, I don't know if I would like drawing like this. Um, I think my hand would get tired drawing like this. So I'm thinking be before, I think before I, um, yeah, the ta my tablet's black too. Yeah, I don't have my lights on so you can see better, but. Can you see it? This is my tablet, and I just draw right here. And I, see, I just, you can see it. See up there? I just draw here. Mine's in Intuos Pro. You should practice with it. I think you'd be great. I can do Mandela's on here really easy because I have a kaleidoscope thing. I might do that for one of the Monday Monday scopes. I'll just do a digital mandala. Well, mine is a Wacom, but the, the Wacom has a couple different tablets. There's bamboo tablets, um, a mine's an Intuos tablet, 
and then the then they usually have different sizes too. So mine is an Intuos Pro medium. Okay. Is it really large? Mine's about the size of a, a sheet of paper, like an eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper. I don't know why I just went that direction when it goes this direction. It says talking and not paying attention. I think the bamboo is um, probably one of the... Yeah, it's cheaper than mine, I know for sure. But, I mean, it's, it's a good starting point. Like, if you don't have any of the equipment and you're interested in digital art, I don't recommend you going out and just buying it right away because... You know, you might not like it. So, you can um, start with a cheaper size to get into it. Oh, well, send me a message. Watch my scopes and we could talk about it. Or you can say, hey, look what I did. Or you can always message me through Facebook Messenger or the group or whatever. You find me. I'm everywhere. Just DM me. Send me a message if you have any questions and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Okay, I don't know much about Illustrator, because, <clears throat> like I said, I've only been doing digital art since Christmas, and this is the only program I have, because this is what my husband bought me for Christmas, so. And you see, I'm laying in some shadow colors. Hmm. But yeah, I, I mean, I can... I can help you figure it out, or, you know, we could even, um, at some time, we can, uh, message, and, you know, I could watch and see what you do. That sometimes is easier to tell you, oh, click on that, and click on this. Anytime, just hit me up, girl! Love helping other artists out. And that's part of the reason why I like doing these scope trains. I love inspiring people who um, like art to not only appreciate art and support art, but maybe even explore their own art. Because the world needs more beauty. <laughs> Alright, so I'm adding... Could never be too much beauty in the world. That's my that's my thoughts on the whole thing. So even though this is black, it's gonna be in the white. It's just gonna come up as a gray shadow when I put the white over it. Thank you. Yeah, the eyes are very important. If you don't get the eyes right, it's not gonna work out right. This is an Alaskan Malmute. Um, they're in the same family as a husky, but I think they're like a little bigger and chunkier than a husky per se. I think huskies are uh, a little skinnier and leaner than the Alaskan Malmutes. But they're all kind of in the same family. And I'm challenging myself with the tongue on this one, because all the references I looked, oh, all the references I looked, the, the cute ones all had like their tongues hanging out. So I said, okay, we'll go for that. Let's do a little tongue action. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm laying down blues, a little bit of grays, and I'm not really paying too close attention to where, um, where I'm putting them right now. I'm just kind of putting them in the general direction that the hair is going to go. And I'm stealing a little bit of the coloring from a picture. Allergic to dogs in general? I have Shih Tzus. They're supposed to be non-allergic like. We're allergic to cats here. I need a little more blue. I want more blue over here because I want it to be a cool... I don't want to use too much gray on this shadow. I want it to be more of a cool shadow. 
And I need a little bit of shadow line to define the bridge of my nose. I can't believe I only have 20 minutes, you guys. Like, an hour just goes by so fast. No wonder uh, Johnny does two hours every Saturday. I'm just saying. <laughs> I wish I had time to do that much art. I just don't. Aww. At least not, you know, I have my family's all here, and they're home, and I have house guests from England. and <sighs> So, like, once again, I'm building up the shadows. And then my, the white's going to go on top of these shadows. And you won't hardly see any of this color when I'm done. It's just going to make the white um, blend in and stand out at the same time. It'll blend in and give it some interest. So the brush I'm using right now is called Just Dab Water. So this is no different than... Um, Thank you. This is no different than just taking um, water and adding it to the little brush strokes that I put down there. And then these are blended on top of the white right now because I already had a little bit of white put down. Sort of, yeah, like a really controlled watercolor. Yeah. And this does have a pretty neat watercolor setting. It just takes, it's a memory hog. And I need to, um, I think I need to get a computer that, that's, that's just dedicated to my art program before I can really experiment with it too much. Because sometimes it clogs my computer up and it just chugs and I don't have the patience to wait for it. So I need to figure that one out. Because it's like real watercolor. So even like, um... It'll still blend and soak into the paper after you're done painting it, which my oil settings here does as well. Yeah, I can do watercolor on here, um, but the one I really like is it's called a real watercolor, and um, the colors all flow and blend like real watercolors, and all that digital, all that. <laughs> All that digital um, blending on its own, like the natural, whatever program they use to mimic the natural uh, flow of watercolors, it takes a lot of memory. So it chugs on my computer sometimes. I need to figure it out. Probably when I have some money to go get a new video card or something. All right, so now you'll see as I start laying the white on here. How the, the undercolors are important to get the details of a white. And even in this program, even after I'm done painting, for about one or two minutes, my colors will blend together. Because I'm using a blender brush. But it also builds up layers just like watercolor. So the more layers I paint on top of it, you can kind of see the brush strokes and the colors will build up. It all depends, you know, like, I don't know. Sometimes they go quick because everything just seems to go right. Um, it depends on if I run into any issues that I'm not liking. Um, it could depend on if I'm having an on day or I'm just not into it. Which then if that's, if I feel that I'm not into it, I usually just work on a different project. Because I usually have like three or four paintings that I kind of have open at the same time working on. Um, depends on the hair type. The pose I'm doing, it, it, it's just, I don't know. But in general, probably, I don't work on them every day, so it's hard to keep track. Um, maybe uh, 12 to 20 hours, maybe, depending on the, I mean, it's hard to tell. Yeah, in general, 
a little while. <laughs> Enough that I get to know, because sometimes I get really picky on the details, and I don't, I don't, I won't let it. I won't. Even if I'm doing it for somebody, I would rather end up being. I would rather end up working for a dollar an hour than give somebody a portrait that was not to my satisfaction. So I don't really keep track of like a billable hour or anything. But yeah, they don't leave. They don't leave until I deem them ready to leave. And even then, I'm sometimes I'm like, eh, I see that detail. I could pick at it, but you know, there's a fine line between um, picking at it too much. Mm, you can see how the the white. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to unfocus you guys. Focus there we go. You can see how the um, white goes over the colors, and you start getting the natural shading, which will help the white show up as not just white. So I need to bring this muzzle here both down and back at the same time. The muzzles are tricky because the hair does come down from the nose, like in this way, but then it kind of flips around about right here. So it comes like down, but then about like right here on the bottom crease of the nose, it starts curling back like that. And you get these little wispies. And then generally, dogs have um, black lips. They're usually either black or like a brown color. And they have dark underneath their noses, so you, you kind of just have to build these up to get this form right. And another trick is adding little white um, tips on the ends of your hair to help bring it up from a layer behind it. The heart, this is always a tricky part, right by where the mouth and stuff goes, because it comes, thank you, dog hair comes down from an eye, and it'll come down this way, and it'll either go towards the muzzle, or it starts going towards the back of the face, and then like right here, you start getting the angle to go under the side of the face, so you have to get this little, like, direction shift right here, and usually there's a crease right in here for the edge of the mouth, so right in here eventually there'll be a little mouth crease, and then it starts, once it comes around this little bend, it starts flicking out this way again. And these Alaskan Malmutes have pretty long soft hair, so I'm doing long swooshes. And it's just a nice long little flick of my wrist. And I'm not too worried about the ends. They'll blend in on their own. And this is just the first go around. <laughs> After I get a base, a base set, um, you come back and work all the details more until you're ready. But with this much fur, I'll probably do um, the face on one layer and then put the body on a layer underneath it so the front of the face always looks on top of the body part. That's another little digital helpfulness. Now this is not going too far because this, this um, black color comes around over on this side over here. So that'll start getting blended in at some point. And then under the jaw area it's going to be darker just because of your lights and shadows.
Like, I don't really have a photo. I do sort of have a photo reference, but not really. I mean, I kind of have this dog here for some um, color and a little bit of shadows, but I'm mostly just drawing the dog. Like, I took a... I had, like, three or four reference pictures because I'm not super familiar. You know, I can't just draw it from my brain. But... <laughs> After I got the shape of a dog down, the rest is just kind of, all right, in general, they kind of have this effect, and that's just how I'm drawing it. Which will go a lot faster than doing a custom portrait, because I can just um, not really pay too much attention. I can just kind of do my thing. Whereas if I'm doing a custom portrait, I really have to... Um, look at the specific markings of that dog because if you're a pet owner you know you could tell your dog from any other dog that might be the exact same kind of dog and that's because they all have different markings or personality all right so I'm bringing this right up under here because I will draw the mouth on top of this hair and that'll make the hair kind of come from underneath the lip area. Because this dog has a little smile. What should we name this dog? Because I talked to them while I'm drawing. What, do you guys have a name? What would you name an Alaskan Malmute? When I draw somebody's dog, I always like to know the dog's name. Because I'll be like, okay. I know, I'm a little crazy. It's all right. <laughs> I don't know, I have to think of an Alaskan Malmute name. I don't know what I would name one. I have little teeny dogs, so. All right. Floofy. Hmm. That's kind of nice. He is funny. Alright. For some reason I'm thinking of he. So it's, you can still see some of the blue, but I'm still building up that layer. And it's going to build up. And the, the, the colors underneath the white is going to help give this white some form. Where if you follow me... <laughs> if you follow me on any of this social media, you'll see the final result. Because I'll probably... Be working on this one for a little while because I have like one, two, three. This is my fourth painting that's not finished yet. So I have three other paintings that I'm finishing. We have seven minutes, so that's where you can follow me to see the end of this. You can see I'm also working on, I have this dancer that I'm finishing. <laughs> this is how I work. I have this butter, this. A couple versions of this, and which one I don't like. I don't know. I have to get rid of those. This dragonfly flower, and I have to finish this pet portrait yet. So, I have all those that I'm still working on right now. Yeah, sure. Can you see my info? Basically, it's my name if you look me up on any of that social media. Um, I'm also on Flickr. I don't have that on there. I'm on Flickr. Uh, I think that's the only extra one I have on there. Thank you. Love to see you there. Makes me happy. I just like sharing my art. So the next step is going... I'm not going to even start it because I only have like five minutes. But the next step will be to plant the nose in the middle of this face. And once I get the nose in, um, that also helps with... Um, bringing the middle of the face forward. Yep, go get your hashtags ready. Yay, Barb. Well, I'm going to send people to you, and I'll be there in five minutes. Oh, you're welcome. I'm excited that you're finally, you're, you're, you jumped on the train with us. And it gets easier, so don't be nervous. You'll be fine. It's not like you've never scoped before. <laughs> She's going to do great. <laughs> you 
did that whole, he did that whole, uh, mural, and then he act like, oh, I'm not an artist, I haven't done anything, and I, you just crack me up. So go do your thing, girl. Do your thing, do your thing. Hi, thanks for stopping. I'm just building up layers on my little puppy dog here. But once I get the magic triangle done, then it's pretty much just sitting here and doing the time, and I can do it while I'm watching TV. So, the magic triangle are the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. I love sharing art. I missed you guys all week. I've been on vacation, and, like, when my husband's home, I don't really like to scope. I only scope on Saturdays, and he tolerates it, but... Pretty soon football will start, so on Sundays I'll be scoping while he watches football all day. But I kind of, I kind of like to, you know, when he's when they're, when they're here, I like to spend time with my family. So, and I've been on vacation, and he took vacation for my birthday, and so we've just been doing like vacation stuff all week. And I haven't scoped since last week, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So I hope everybody didn't forget who the heck I was. In the social media world, a week can be a long time. <laughs> Alright. So I was just explaining how white is not white. And that's why I have all the blue and black under there. To give me some natural shading. And my white layers are going to build up on this. Right now I'm just doing a... This is the very beginning. I just started with those eyes. Oh, yeah. Well, I haven't been married for 26 years for nothing. <laughs> Gotta take care of the boss. Give him some attention, you know? Go out and have some fun and laughs and make memories. Thank you. Well, it's almost 26. In October, it'll be 26 years. But, close enough. See, I, and it surprises me that, it's a, that that's such a rare thing. I Because I don't know anything different. Um, my grandparents were married for like 70 some years. I don't know. They were married for a long time. My parents have been married for 53 years, so I just, I don't really, I don't really have a concept of that's not what marriage is, you know? Now my husband, his dad was married three times, so that's a different story. Yeah. I think people just give up too quick and um, maybe are a little selfish and not willing to um, forgive and, you know, it's a lot of instant gratification with younger people, I think, and they don't realize that when it's not so much fun and you get work through it, that's where you're gaining the quality from. And you have to be giving, you know, you have to say, hey, it's not always me, 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 me. But I told my husband right from the beginning when we first started dating, because, you know, his parents got divorced when he was, like, four. His dad had three wives um, and, a, and a child in between a couple of them. So uh, I pointed to my grandparents, and I, when we, I think we were only dating for, like, a month or two, and I pointed to my grandparents, and I said, all right, if you're not in it for possibly that, then don't even bother with me. So, he knew from the beginning. Uh, uh, uh. You just gotta treat each other right. You have to never, never stop dating and taking it for granted. Alright, folks. So, I have to leave you with this. Because it is now 10 o'clock. So, I will be building up layers. And if you follow me on here. Thank you. If you follow me on here. 
Eventually, you'll get to see the, the um, rest of it. And if you follow me on Scope, I'm sure you'll get to see me scope some more of it. Also, please follow the rest of our artists here today on our train. And everybody, let's go to Art by Zalazar. I'm going to go over there, and if you're following me, I'm going to share it so you'll be able to follow really easily, too. So there is our day planned. And I hope to see all you guys there. Let's go support Barb. It's her very first train ride. Thank you for spending this hour with me, everybody. Oh, I'll, be, I'll try to be there if I'm not busy. If not, I'll be in replay.